Hey there, welcome to the Proud Animator YouTube channel. So, in this lesson, we are going to learn how to apply anticipation while animating in After Effects. So, let's start. So, few weeks back, I have already made a tutorial on how to apply anticipation in anima inner animation and how applying anticipation can make your animation better. So there I have explained you in details that how anticipation can make your animation look more realistic. So if you want to check it out, you can check it from the link in the description. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how to apply anticipation when you are animating in After Effects. So let's begin with the lesson. So here is just a simple morphing animation where the cat for this particular shape is just scaling up but it's uh, the animation is really looking very mechanical and doesn't really look that good and here is another one with the same shape let's apply anticipation in it with the same animation and let's check how animation how anticipation can make your animation look better so before applying anticipation i mean for applying anticipation you always uh, need to remember that anticipation means when particular object or a character is preparing for its main action so here the main action is it's just scaling up so for that to anticipate it it can even rotate it from one and one corner slightly then transform or just scale up or slightly squash and then again just scale it up so let's do the boat first of all we are going to just add some rotation to the corner as well as i am going to slightly squash it down as well so first of all let's put a null over here and let's change its anchor point position all right i'm going to parent it with this null and let's convert it into a bezier path and put keyframe on the path property and after that, I'm going to slightly add some rotation to this null. Jump onto next three frames. Slightly rotate it in the opposite side. Let's give it minus three degree of rotation. That's or minus two degree. And again, after three frames, it will be at zero degree rotation. And at this particular point, it will transform. So let's add the transformation. So at this particular point, it will basically slightly squash we can just uh, first of all scale it down or rather we can just do it with the path only slightly scale it down and also slightly to add some rubbery feel to it we can even change the shape a bit Now after that it will transform, let's jump on to 8 frames and let's give it the transformation. Also add some overshoot to it, it would look better because we have added anticipation then we also need to add some overshoot to make it make the animation even look better. Now at this particular point, it will again rotate. So we can just uh, copy this null layer and add some rotation at this particular point. So I'm going to move this null layer and also change its anchor point. We can even scale it out, scale it up a bit to add some overshoot. And at this particular point, it let's add some more overshoot. And after that, it, this whole thing will decay so that we can get a rubbery feel to it. Now we are going to separate the layers and just parent this one with this one. And then it will come to rest with its neutral position. So you can see the difference in this animation. It's looking like it's kind of exploding, but it, this animation is looking more mechanical. Doesn't really feel good compared to this one. 
So this is how anti applying anticipation even in a simple animation like just a scale up or scale down can even make your animation look good. So here is a head turn animation. So let's apply the same technique in this one as well. So here it's again looking very mechanical without anticipation. So what we can do is we can even move it in the opposite side. Same is the previous one. We have just uh, scaled down and squashed it. So in this one, it's uh, just turning its head in. Uh, so we can just slightly turn it in the opposite side. Then again, go for the main action. So let's do that. First of all, I'm going to delete the keyframes. So I'm going to add position on this slider slider of the face then i mean jump on to next four frames now i'm going to move the head slightly upwards and also slightly left side let's give it one more frame now we can jump on to next eight frames and move it in the opposite side and after that it will come to rest so i will jump on to next five frames and it will be somewhere around here similar to the rest pose yeah perfect and at the middle on the fourth frame we are going to move this move the head extreme downwards okay let's ease everything and let's change it to roving keyframe so let's check our animation well uh, let's slow it down a bit yeah, it's looking far better compared to the previous one. Previous one was looking very mechanical and doesn't looking that natural. And even for the mouth, we can do the same. Let's add position to this slider. Now, at this particular point, it will just the mouth's shape will be somewhere around here. So before changing the shape of the mouth at this particular point, let's scale it down a bit and also scale it upwards i will just move it to its extreme okay now let's easy uh, easy and let's check the animation yeah it's looking like it's uh, it's looking surprised or just shocked some kind of that feeling is getting but from the previous animation without anticipation uh, there wasn't any life to it now Again, we can go even further. We can add slight rotation to this head as well. Also some squash and stretch to it. So let's delete up the uh, all these keyframes and do it over here. Okay, what we are going to do is we are going to match the keyframes. So at this point, it's neutral. So let's put rotation over here and at this point it's going upwards so we can tilt it in the in the opposite direction so let's give it around three degrees not much and at this particular point so we can even add some key posts over here as well at this point it will just be a zero degree of rotation and then at this particular point, it will again rotate it in the opposite side. And again, at this particular point, it will be around, uh, let's say, 1, minus 1. Or we can even add some overshoot to it. So let's give it minus 1 first. And then again, I will jump on to next around four frames and give it minus two. So which will be the neutral pose. Also change this one to minus four then. All right, let's use our keyframes and let's check the animation. Yeah, it's looking better. And if we just offset the whole thing, then it would look even better because right now everything is moving, moving just together. So I'm just offsetting it by two frames. Now let's check our animation.
yeah it's looking a lot better so this is how applying anticipation can make your animation look better so let's jump on to our next example which will be the last example for this lesson now here is a simple jump animation now here is a jump animation without anticipation let's check it out so you can clearly see that something is off with this particular jump animation it doesn't really look that good and let's check this one this is with anticipation so this one is looking a lot better because of this particular this particular pose this is where it's anticipating for the jump now i have already uh, explained you guys how to animate a jump so the link will be in the description you can check it out but to tell it in short these are the key poses of a jump animation. So first of all, the character needs to anticipate and then it goes for the jump and in between is a push pose and then it flies off the ground and then other follow through and overshoot and everything happens. So after removing the anticipation part, you can see that how awkward this jump is looking. I mean, it doesn't really look that good. and after applying the this just one anticipation well uh, here i have applied two anticipations so as you can see i have just bended it in the opposite direction and then again it is squashing it going downwards and then it's jumping so like this applying anticipation it can make your animation look better even with simple and even with complex animations if you want to learn how to animate a jump then do check it out the link in the description so that is it for this lesson hope you like the video if you liked it then make sure to hit the like button if you have any doubt regarding the lesson make sure to comment down below i will be happy to help you out and if you are here for the first time make sure to subscribe the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates until then goodbye